Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel, also the name of my Facebook group and my Patreon. Welcome to my backyard. There's going to be one less tree to climb on, but it was due, and I'm going to enjoy it uh, from this perspective for the first and the last time. I owe you some data on testing, and with this video, I'm going to start a playlist uh, and maybe move some other videos I had done previously on the JRB hitch to this playlist on testing and brake testing. You'll recall in my one of my more recent videos, I introduced to you the Longhorn hitch and the Longhorn soft shackle, and I even managed to break my new line scale three with a crude test I, I improvised using my pickup truck. And uh, I'll know better next time. But while that was out for repair, some friends out on the web seeing my videos volunteered to pick up the slack and help me out with some testing. And I really just got to start out with thanking you all for that support. And I want to mention our friends out at Arb Session. Uh, they did a whole bunch of tests where I just sent them some samples and they broke them in the interest of science and sent me back numbers. And so Danny and team, thank you guys so much for that. It was, uh, it was really great to work with you. And the second set of numbers and the videos you're gonna see were from my trip recently out to our friends at Rock and Arbor, Rock and Rescue in Butler, Pennsylvania, where we broke a bunch more stuff. So uh, first, what you're gonna see in this video, you're gonna see brake tests and brake results of the Longhorn Hitch, see my previous video on that, the Longhorn Soft Shackle. When we take the Longhorn Hitch and turn it into a soft shackle and one that we can close either in what I call soft mode, that's a soft mode, or we can close it using a hard toggle like a carabiner. Okay, you're also going to see some testing of uh, items unrelated to the uh, Longhorn. You're going to see a strength test of the running highwayman's hitch, a strength test of the JRB hitch, a strength test of the running JRB hitch, and lastly a pull test on the JRB ascender friction hitch tied onto a rope to see where the friction hitch started to slide. Okay, first things first. Little background on statistics. Whenever we break something, we break this we get a strength. We broke this and we got a strength and we did it, tied it the same way. Well, we're always getting a slightly different number. That's, that's expected. That's called the deviation. And uh, I, if we do five tests, just five tests instead of a thousand tests, we can get a pretty got, good idea of, of how much deviation will, is occurring in our sample set. And we can make a pretty safe bet in terms of what the minimum would be. So in these tests I'm about to give you, I'm gonna give you five numbers, and then I'm gonna give you a minimum. And the minimum is gonna be less than any of the five numbers. Why? Again, you can do the math or you can do the research, but when we take those numbers and we calculate the standard deviation, and we plug it into a calculator, what we're looking to achieve is to calculate the three sigma minimum braking strength. And all that means is you can expect, if you did do 10,000 brakes, you could expect, a the number is 99.7% of the time the number we quote as safe is indeed safe. Only, uh, you know, uh, a couple tenths of a percent of the time might we go with, get a lower number. And of course, we can't afford it to break this 10,000 times. So that's, that's an industry standard number and calculation. And I'm going to give you those numbers now. Where my thumbs are on this Longhorn Hitch when I pull from end to end and break this using sterling cord with an MBS of 2787 pounds or 12.4 kilonewtons. And now I've got two strands absorbing the load, okay? So when I pull this to break, I got 6104, 5660, 5981, 5905, and 5885. They're all pounds, of course, to give me a three sigma number of 5419 or 24 kilonewtons. So what, what does that mean in layman's terms? What that, what that means is that this climbing rated carabiner, which they're typically rated at 24, and I, I grabbed this one and sure enough, it's rated at 24 end to end. This climbing rated carabiner and this are approximately the same strength. I can trust my life on this. That's what it means to me. Now we took the Longhorn hitch, transformed it into the soft shackle, 
in soft with the soft trigger and tested it. The four, the five numbers were 8462, 8530, 7559, 7930, 6775. This three sigma derivative is 5686 or 25.3 kilonewtons. Layman's interpretation that this is even stronger than this. I can trust my life on this. There's a long horn soft shackle toggled in soft mode. And the third test of the Longhorn was the hard toggle, where I use a carabiner to close this. And there are applications, right, for this. Even though we're using a carabiner as the toggle, we don't want a carabiner in here because we don't want it to subject it to bending forces. Like the exhibit I already demonstrated on my channel where I'm rigging a JRB climbing system using this, okay? So the numbers I got there were 9052, 9370, 7830, 8820, and 8870, with a three sigma number of 6744 pounds or 30 kilonewtons. What does that mean? I, I trust this with, with my life. I'll climb on that. with the hard carabiner toggle. Now with the hard toggle notice that the joined piece of the shackle held firm and where we had breakage were here and here so physically the cord snapped at its MBS. This exceeded the MBS with the hard toggle. Now again, I don't expect us to be using it to breaking strength, and so therefore, you know, it's okay if, if it was tough to remove this carabiner or if we weren't able to reuse this device because it should never see that kind of load. If you want to tow your, your four-wheel drive vehicle out of a ditch, go buy uh, one that's designed for towing. So on that break, the carabiner was clean and the two uh, strands of rope, the ends which had broken, were on one side of the carabiner. So it broke inside of the unit. Okay, so for the next set of tests, 
These are strength tests now. We're just taking a length of that 12.4 kilonewton cord, a 2787 pounds, and we're pulling it to break. And we're tying both ends onto the pull apparatus with the same hitch. First, we tested the running highwayman's hitch, and we got 2,900 pounds, or 12.9 kilonewtons. So that's kind of remarkable. The running highwayman's hitch held even, it, it was stronger than the MBS. So that's, uh, it did not significantly weaken the cord, and you'll see that video. Next, we tied the JRB hitch got the same result, 2,900 pounds or 12.9 kilonewtons. I was quite surprised with these results. And then tied the running JRB hitch to both sides of the apparatus. We got a similar number. We got 3,080 pounds or 13.7 kilonewtons. Again, you know, tie this with rope, you're, we would expect to get similar results. We're getting brakes which are at or higher of the MBS of the material with which we tied it. All right, let's go take a look at that. Okay, so this is the running highwayman's hitch. The running highwayman's hitch against itself. You got two running highwayman's hitch. I considered using that for life safety, but I went with the JRB hitch instead. So let's see how this does. Okay, so what I have here, as I've got the cord intact at both ends of the rig. I've got the cord intact on the north and south ends of the rig. And so we broke the cord. We didn't break we didn't break the high woman's hitch. Although it it did suck the end in pretty hard. But that's a pretty impressive result. And we got 2,900 on the break. So now we're going to do the J, JRB hitch in 7 millimeter cord against the JRB hitch in 7 millimeter cord. I would expect that to be as, as strong or stronger than what we just saw with the running highwaymen's. It, it can't beat it, let's put it that way. Okay, so my hitches are intact. This hitch is intact. This one blew off of the other shackle, and we got 2,900. 2,900 on the scale. Okay, so now we've got the running JRB hitch against a running JRB hitch. This one's intact. And cord is severed. On the other end, it appears it broke 
on the way in. Well, it's gone. So I'm assumption, assumption is it died going into the hitch. And for the load, 3080. Wow. Okay. So again, with an MBS of 2787, the minimum breaking strength of that cord, all three of our experiments exceeded that. Okay, and the last test you're going to see today, and this one was suggested by my team on Patreon. I want to thank them for their support and this excellent suggestion, and for the team at, at Rock and Arbor for donating the supplies. But what we did is we took the JRB ascender hitch, that's a friction hitch. We tied it in 7 millimeter sterling cord, and we put it on a 9 millimeter Maxim Canyon Elite rope, and we pulled to see where the friction hitch started to slide on the climbing rope and you're about to see that video, and I, I didn't actually go over to pan over to the scale, but what we got was, we got first movement at 900 pounds or four kilonewtons, and then we continued to pull a bit, and we stopped the test at 1,700 pounds or 7.5 kilonewtons. And to me, that was a successful test. We expect a friction hitch when it's subjected to extreme loads, we expect it to slide on the rope. We just don't want it to slide in the neighborhood of our body weight right because we've got to assume uh, first of all we've got uh, climbers of different sizes and shapes we got to think about our ropes could be a little wet they could be a little icy we want to have some margin for error but the fact that a friction hitch will slide a little bit on a rope when it's subjected to extreme load that that's actually a good thing because first it should never happen and if it did happen that would be an indication of a, of a failure or a fall, and it, it adds a small dynamic component to our system. So again, I consider that to be a very positive test, and um, it was really great to get that information affirmed as I wasn't able to do so myself. Okay, so now here's a test that I've been waiting to do for a while, and you've seen me attempt it in, with my tractor, but this is the JRB Ascender Hitch just tied it, it's a 523 in soft bridge mode with one loop exposed as I would typically use it in a JRB climbing system. Brand new rope, you can see it's moving well, just breaking it in, getting it set. All right, we're gonna put that, I might need a pair of pliers to get this open. Let that roll. The channel locks work? Okay, perfect. We're going to put that on our brake test, but we're not going to break it. We want to know where it slips. A friction hitch is always going to slip before it breaks. So just to review, this is 9 millimeter, although it measures closer to 10. Maxim Canyon Elite, it's got a JRB hitch on a 4 inch bollard. This is the JRB Ascender Hitch tied with 7 millimeter sterling utility cord. It's a 523 variant in soft bridge mode, closed with a hunter's bend. And we're going to pull on that and see at what force will this start to move on the line. A little bit of slide. What are we measuring? 900 pounds. Okay, now we're getting a pretty good slide. We're at 1300 pounds. Alright, that's good. We don't need to break anything. So we got a little bit of movement at 900 pounds, and we're currently holding at 1700. Of course, that wouldn't be usable in that state. We've got a pretty good idea, though, and that's exactly what we'd expect from a friction hitch. My, my rule of thumb was that if we got 1,000 pounds out of a friction hitch, we're, we're doing pretty well. Thank you guys very much. If you've got any more comments on what you would like to see tested in the future, let me know. I've got my lime scale fixed, and uh, my pickup truck's still running, so maybe we'll pull something in the front yard. Thank you.